This is the Pal Talk News Network. The views expressed are solely those of the speaker and not necessarily those of PalTalk.com, AVM Software, or its advertisers. News Talk is online. News Talk Online is a production of PalTalk.com, the largest multimedia interactive program on the Internet with more than 4 million unique users on demand on iTunes and on YouTube and on my blog, GaryBaumgarten.com, where you're encouraged to post your comments, whether you agree with yours truly or not. No retribution. And thanks to our good friends at CRN Digital Talk Radio. We're syndicated to an additional 12 million households. I am your host, Gary Baumgarten. I welcome you to the show. Well, a couple hours ago, we carried live here on the Pal Talk News Network the very solemn memorial service at Fort Hood uh, for uh, the shootings there. Uh, 13 people dead last week, Thursday, allegedly by U.S. Army Major Malik Nadel Hassan. New developments in the investigation overnight We now know that the FBI intercepted communications between Hassan and an imam in Yemen who had ties with two of the 9-11 hijackers. But in the course of that investigation, they determined that Major Hassan was just doing research for his work as a psychiatrist at the Walter Reed Army Hospital, and uh, they went no further with the investigation. To me, and let me add this caveat, Uh, that uh, the FBI is at a disadvantage here because there may be some aspects of this investigation that they are not at liberty to make public. So there may be some things that we are unaware of, and as a result, we may reach conclusions or assumptions that are not right. But on the face of it, it would seem to me that there was plenty of evidence there to suggest that this individual Uh, was uh, not of the proper frame of mind to be a psychiatrist to people returning from Afghanistan and Iraq with both physical and emotional wounds, and further, not a candidate to be sent into either of those theaters of war uh, because of the information that both the Army and the FBI had about him, and yet, perhaps, as I suggest in my piece on the PalTalk News Network site, paltalknewsnetwork.com, there are some parallels between this situation and September the 11th, 2001, where a field FBI agent became aware of the fact that some uh, Muslim individuals were taking flying lessons, but they weren't learning how to take off and they weren't learning how to land and set that information through channels to Washington, D.C., where it basically ended up in the dead letter file because the agent was not assigned to counterterrorism work. And so the concerns that were forwarded to D.C. were ignored, and we know what happened uh, as a result of that. Uh, the tragedy of September the 11th, 2001, that with that information, had they followed up, perhaps, there are no guarantees, but perhaps the attacks could have been thwarted. And I'm beginning to wonder, as a result of what the U.S. Army knew about Major Hassan and the FBI knew about Major Hassan, why wasn't something done to remove him from the environment in which he was, which led to the tragedy of Thursday last. Uh, You know, after the September 11th attacks, the intelligence communities and the law enforcement communities in our nation agreed that something had to be done to ensure that important information no longer go ignored. And I will say that there has been, there have been great strides to repair Uh, those uh, miscues that occurred before September the 11th. But apparently they haven't gone far enough, at least based on what we are seeing today. Now, one of the things 
things that the agencies pledge to do is to not keep information that they received to themselves. They pledge to share it with other agencies that are involved in the fight against terrorism. The FBI pledged to share with the NSA and the CIA and the local police information that they got. The CIA pledged to share with all of the others and so forth down the line. The Pentagon is now saying that it was unaware of what the FBI knew about Major Hassan's communications with this imam in Yemen. Now, it's hard to believe that nobody in the Army Criminal Investigations Services was aware of this uh, because the FBI was investigating a major in the United States Army. So how could no one in the armed forces be aware? Uh, and, of course, uh, they're doing damage control now. Uh, both the uh, Justice Department and the Pentagon are trying to do damage control uh, so that they won't appear culpable for uh, allowing for this guy who had all the signs we now see in retrospect of a jihadist who was ready to uh, perhaps take action uh, against his fellow men in uniform. His state of mind wasn't particularly good. They were aware uh, that his beliefs and his proselytizing, uh, which is not permitted, a, uh, a an officer in the armed services is not supposed to proselytize a religion to his subordinates. And clearly, a mental health care giver is not supposed to be proselytizing his beliefs to his patients. So they were aware of it to the point where they gave him a poor performance rating. So they can't say that they did not know that Major Hassan was a potential problem. And yet, the evidence would suggest <laughs> that they did little or nothing to isolate him and, in fact, may have only exacerbated the situation by ordering him overseas into a theater of war to which he conscientiously objected very stridently. And I recognize that it, it's not quite the same as an armed member of the military conscientiously objecting and perhaps if that were the case if Major Hassan had been an infantryman for example perhaps they could have assigned him to a non-combat function in this case he was assigned to a non-combat function because he was a psychiatrist and so he was going there to help people who were emotionally wounded in the in, in the in the battlefield which would not one would think go against his beliefs 